So this is the Happy House Hunters, and we are also merging with uh, uh, long-term rentals, short-term rentals, mid-term rentals, all of it's together in the one call because um, real estate is real estate. And once you guys get involved in real estate, um, you can use properties for different things at different times. And so we've decided to include them together. And so today we are talking about funding. We go through a series of six steps, how to find the property, how to fund the property, how to fix it, how to either flip it or fill it. And then what is your freedom number? How many of those do you have to do to make that day job optional? My day job is now optional. It has been for several years now and I love it. And uh, we were just chatting earlier. Adam has a new um, background office space there. He's moved to a new location and Mark has updated mine a little bit. So I have bigger space. Um, Kyle's working on his and, and, uh, David, I don't know about you guys. I'm not sure what, what's happening with you guys just yet. So, uh, we'll get a chance to hear. Um, I know you've got the whole financial piece going, but as far as you personally, I don't know if, if, uh, you know, if you got the, the motor home in the driveway ready to <laughs> the road or not, no. so Based not, not yet. The, uh, what do they call that? Your vision board. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I get it. I get it. So before we get started in actually talking about real estate, and today, again, our topic is funding, um, just tell us a little bit about you personally. You know, what are you doing personally? How many properties do you have or not have? Or, you know, a little bit of your background, what brought you to this point, and where are you coming to us from? And um, Kyle, can you hear me okay? I know you haven't jumped in there yet. I see that you came up, but can you can you hear and see us okay? Yep, I hear and see okay. All right, Kyle, do you want to introduce yourself and tell the folks who you are and how you, uh, what part you play in this this group today? Yeah, sure. Um, my name is Kyle Brandon. I've been a licensed agent for about 11 years now and just bought my first property last year. Um, it's a duplex that we are converting back into a single family home. So that's been a fun and interesting journey of discovery um, along the way. But I'm a licensed realtor covering all of central Ohio. Uh, but my primary markets are Columbus, Lancaster, and now Mansfield, where I'm where I'm at quite a bit. All right, perfect, perfect. Kyle is our in-house realtor, and so for any of you that are listening either in person or uh, listening later to the replay, just know that if you want to get into any properties, Kyle is the person to get you in there if you want to see something. And he is Johnny on this spot. Whenever I call and say I want to see something, he gets us in right away. So um, good to know that. And we are still working on some boots on the ground. So when we have some properties that we can go through and actually see in person, um, I'll blast that out to the group. So everybody has that. Um, Adam, you are my also my co-host, Komod. Tell us a little bit uh, about your background. How did you get to where you are right now? Sitting in this beautiful kitchen, it looks like. Or <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, my background, I got into banking and uh, finance back in 2008 because I have um, excellent timing. And uh, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I started off in the salt mines of banking in the call center, getting yelled at at 10 o'clock at night by people about their overdraft fees, and then eventually worked my way into private banking and wealth management and um, specialized in lending in that space. So I helped super rich people manage their debt and um, that was fun. And I grew up with investment real estate. So, um, you know, Saturday mornings, it was uh, get out of bed. We got to go paint. We got to go mow grass. We got to go shovel dog poop out of the basement because the tenants just like let it go everywhere and uh, that kind of stuff. So um, we, uh, oh, my cat just pounced in because the Amazon guy was delivering something and <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, he uh, so I did that. I uh, my wife and I bought our first duplex uh, 10 years ago and house hacked it for 10 years. And two months ago, moved out finally um, to this house, which um, we originally ran as a short term rental. And then that market kind of fell apart for us um, in central Ohio. Unless you have something really, really nice, it's hard to to make a buck on that. So we're like, hey, we're looking for a house. Let's just use this extra house that we had lying around. And so we moved in back in November and um, are super thrilled with it. 
Well, and you know what, that's the fun part. And that's what I was saying uh, when I first came on is that sometimes the property that you have, that you think you're going to do one thing with, you can actually change it up and, mm -hmm. and do different things at different stages. Um, I bought a property as a short term rental and I had uh, a kind of, I'll say a girlfriend, I really hadn't known her too long, but she knew a friend of a friend of a friend, you know how that goes, especially in our business, you know, there's a lot of mm -hmm. referrals. And she says, I have a girl that really desperately needs a place. Would you consider renting that long term instead? And we were like, hmm, OK, well, the long term renter is still there. And, you know, she's she wanted to know, you know, twist my arm. She goes, can I pay like a whole year up front? I'm like, OK. <laughs> <laughs> And this property needed a well, it needed some updates, it, you know, it just, it needed some stuff. And so we were able to fund all of that by her paying her rent up front. She's still there. Um, you know, we're going to ride the train as long as it's on the tracks, but if she ever decides to move on, then we'll give it a try as a short term, which is our original intent. So it's good that you can do different things with the properties at different times. So that's great. So thanks, Adam. That's, that's, uh, that's some nice insight to some folks that are listening. Um, David, how about you? How did you get to where you are today, sitting here in your living room, chatting <laughs> with us about funding? Well, uh, we are the new kids on the block, apparently. Uh, my wife and I both, well, through her uh, uh, careful uh, attention to our finances, we were actually able to retire early. Um, but then after retiring, I guess I will be three years in June, I believe, um, we decided we wanted to be sure we stayed retired. Uh, so started looking at real estate. And again, I'll have to give full credit to uh, my wife, Tammy, for that one. She got us down this path and it's uh, actually been very interesting. Uh, didn't buy our first house until 2020. First investment property until 2020. Bought our first house back when we got married, when we were just young kids, but uh, started investing in 2020. Uh, shortly after that, I actually bought the house that you see me sitting in right now, which is part of a quad in Canal Winchester. So there are two other buildings that total three other units that are sitting behind us right now. So we are now house hacking, been doing that for about two years, hoping not to go the full 10 that Adam made it, but you know, <laughs> probably at least a couple more. Though, honestly, it's such a great, house hacking is such a great option because, you know, it's, it's not a mansion, but it's a decent house and somebody else is paying for us to live here. So our next house might just be our next house hack. Uh, it's something we, we talk about. So it's, we'll see where that one heads. Um, but then I know I'm here today to talk a little bit about funding. And we started down that path as private lenders um, when we'd actually done a refi on one of our, a cash out refi on one of our rental properties or our investment properties, because we had another deal that we were putting an offer in on through Kyle, by the way, I definitely highly recommend him for anyone who's looking for a, you know, an investor. And uh, Adam actually was uh, deeply involved in that deal until it fell apart. <laughs> so, no, that's fault. interesting and we're going to come back we're going to circle back around and we're going to talk about all of those funding deals um i'm, I'm going to jump in and tell everyone just a bit about me and i want to i want to define house hacking for those of you that are listening that go what in the world is david talking about and we we talk about in, in the in this real estate investing space we talk about ha house hacking quite a bit because it's such a great way to get started so if any of you are on this call and you want to get started and you don't know how to get started, house hacking is a great way to get started. And house hacking can be anything from um, buying a duplex and living in half and renting out half. It can be even, uh, you know, let's say you're close to a campus somewhere and you're just going to rent out bedrooms to students uh, and you live in one of the bedrooms and, and rent out the other bedrooms and uh, in as far like a shared housing type situation. And that's house hacking. I personally am also house hacking. In the fact that I took my four bedroom house in Canal Winchester and turned it into a bed and breakfast, turned it into a guest house 
bed and breakfast through our city, got all of my approvals and, you know, jumped through all the hoops and did all the stuff that they wanted me to do. And I now rent it out by the room. I don't rent out the entire house because we live here. And so we have an owner suite, which includes our kitchen and living room and dining room and then a master suite. And then the other three bedrooms, I actually rent out by the room. So I could have three different guests that do not know each other that are staying here at the same time. As a matter of fact, I have a full house often. And um, last night I had a full house. So I was flipping rooms this morning. And so uh, that's another form of house hacking. Uh, so there's all kinds of ways that you can house hack. So ask any of us, if, if those of you that are listening, uh, that you can unmute and ask a question, but I am gonna ask you if you look at the bottom of your screen, and I don't know if any of you are on your phone, it's a little harder to find if you're on your phone or tablet, but if you're on a desktop or laptop, at the bottom of your screen, you see a raise hand button. And if you have a question, please feel free to jump in and raise your hand and ask the question as we're talking. Um, that way we don't wanna forget you. We don't wanna get clear to the end and, and everybody putting questions in the chat and then we forget somebody's question. And plus sometimes once you leave that particular conversation, it's hard to circle back. So ask the question as it comes up. Uh, right now we have five in the audience and four of us, um, well, I'll call it on stage. Uh, myself and Adam and David and Kyle, we're all up front. And so with that, I am going to turn it back over to Adam. And Adam, go ahead and tell us about um, funding the deal. Uh, what do you have to offer today, Adam? I'll turn it over sure. to you. Yeah. So I'm a part of LFG Lending, Lawrence Financial Group. We um, specialize in lending for real estate investors. So and there's we, a big event tomorrow morning. Am I right? There's a big there's event. a big event tomorrow morning. Mortgage so for in any the morning. of you that are local, be sure and come out and meet Adam. It's at the family room in Westerville is what it's called. And it's a cute little coffee shop that uh, Jason DeVilvis opened up. You know him? Remember him? I do. I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's a great guy. Um, yep. So and they I guess they've just been killing it like they. I think they hosted like bingo or something there and it was a full house at like six o'clock at night in a coffee house, which is not common, you know, but anyways, uh, yeah, so we're mortgage brokers. We broker about 30 to 40 different lenders in around 38 different states. We specialize in three kinds of lending. So that's hard money for your fix and flips, um, DSCR lending for rent ready properties, and DSCR stands for debt service coverage ratio. And I'll get into that in a second. And then uh, commercial lending. So that's for larger projects. Or if you wanted to do like a portfolio of houses, um, we have a lot of relationships with local community banks, credit unions, that kind of thing that have an appetite for that kind of lending. Typically, your large banks are not interested in that. Like your PNC, your Chase, your US Bank, they are, if they're willing to look at investment real estate, it's in a in a very brutal, meticulous way. So a lot of the lenders that we have, they they ha do have an appetite for it, um, and it's a, just a lot easier to get things done. So speaking of get things done, DSCR lending is kind of the name of the game these days when it comes to long term financing. So with DSCR lending, debt service coverage ratio lending, we're going to use the income and the expenses of the loan to qualify uh, the loan or of the property to qualify the loan. Uh, rather than your personal income. So you don't have to worry about debt to income ratio or pay stubs or W-2s. If you are a real estate investor and you are and you have weird income because you just flipped a house and you haven't had a normal job in nine months because you were just, you know, swinging a hammer that entire time, then DSCR lending is right for you. Um, so what the one of the, the the key features of it is that if you're buying something that has a value add, and you're going to uh, you know, rehab the property, once it's done, in order to, to get a cash out refinance with a traditional conventional loan that you would get at one of your big banks, um, it's going to be a 12-month waiting period before you can use a new appraised value. With DSCR lending, we can do it in as little as zero days. Um, so I will say, so for the best pricing that we've got right now, 90 days seems to be the sweet spot. So you buy the house on day one, on day four, let's say you finish the rehab 
by day 40 or 45. And we start on the refinance process. We then close on day 91 of ownership. So you've got three months of seasoning. And at day 91, you now have a 30-year fixed rate loan uh, in place to pay off your uh, hard money loan or your private money loan um, or get your cash back out if you did it all in cash. So there's a lot of interesting options there. And then you let your your renter, if you're going to do a buy and hold, you let them make your payments and you let them buy. Exactly. Your yeah. Oh, yeah. So typically we're trying to hit. So debt service coverage ratio. Well, what is the ratio? The ratio, a good ratio is like 1.2. So in other words, um, your rent is your income from property is 120 percent of what your uh, PITI mortgage payment, your principal interest taxes and insurance mortgage payment would be. So to and to clarify that even further, um, let's say your rent is a, is twelve hundred dollars a month. Uh, you don't want your mortgage payment to be more than a thousand dollars a month. So assuming that you know the numbers work, then it's a it's a fantastic uh, option. Now we can go less than one point two percent or one point two on a debt service coverage ratio. Um, one of our lenders is at like a one point one minimum, and then we have other lenders that will even go down to a one point zero. I see Sue has a question. What's up, Sue? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can. My computer is all whack, so that's how come I had to log back in. Um, I've heard that DSCR loans, although they're wonderful, they're very expensive. Can you talk about that? Sure. So DSCR loans are more expensive than conventional loans. And why is that? Conventional loans are subsidized by the U.S. government through Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac. So if you want the rock bottom lowest possible rate, go get a conventional loan. Absolutely. Now, the challenge is, is you can only have 10 of them at any one time. So if you ever want to have more than 10 properties, then you're going to have to eventually get into DSCR lending or commercial lending or some other kind of alternate lending. Um, uh, what else is going on there? These are funded by hedge funds, right? They want to make some money. So uh, they're, I mean, it's certainly not a charity. It's not a, a social program. <laughs> it's it's a business, right? So these are okay. private independent companies that are making these loans and um, they're more expensive. Now, how much more expensive? About a point. So mm -hmm. so if you're at 7% on a on a conventional loan, you can figure about eight, eight and a half percent on a uh, on a DSCR loan. So, um, you know, the other thing that's a big advantage with DSCR lending is you can close in an LLC, whereas with a conventional loan, you cannot. Um, so if you, if your lawyer has told you to have an extra added layer of protection and own these properties and entities, then, uh, DSCR lending is the way to go. Um, also many of our DSCR lenders do not report to personal credit. So if you plan on buying that beautiful house on the Hill someday, and you want to make sure that you've got a clean credit report for your lender, when you do buy that, that castle, uh, you want to make sure that. Um, you know, if you can avoid having a bunch of mortgages reporting on your credit, uh, the better off you'll be because then you're, it's easier to calculate your debt to income ratio. You can, it's easier to hit those minimums without getting into challenges with uh, Fannie and Freddie Mac guidelines. Got it. Yeah. I'd what like to add, they're also good for people who, uh, like my wife and I, that don't have W-2s. So mm -hmm. we got That's our DS DSCR loans through Adam when we no longer had W-2s and, and had have trouble qualifying for the conventional loans. Yeah, we just yeah. did one through Adam. Uh, Mark actually just did a refi on a duplex and we did that one through Adam on a DSCR. Yeah. Wow. Now, I mean, if you're going to, if you want to do this one time, if you want to go buy, out and buy one property because your kid's going to go to college and you want to just rent it out to him and his, like, and his buddies or whatever, Okay, yeah, just go get a conventional loan. Like you, you don't necessarily have to go through the rigor morale of setting up an LLC. I mean, maybe you do. Talk to your lawyer. I'm not a lawyer or an accountant. You, maybe there's some advantage to doing that. But for anybody that wants to develop a, a strong rental portfolio, DSCR loans are kind of a necessary, they're a necessary component of that. Okay, so the monthly interest rate for the PITI is a little higher. What about the annual? Just the annual interest rate. So they're, so it's all oh. annual, right? Got it. So the, so like, and depending on how, what you're buying, you know, if you're buying, so like we deal a lot in smaller properties, like, like small loan amounts, 
right? So like less than 200,000. Our average loan, we did $55 million last year in loan production as a company. And our average loan amount was $155,000. Okay. Yeah. So um, at that level, the difference between 8% and 7% is like 40 bucks a month. Right. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. So it's, it's not a, it's not huge, you, but you asked about fees. Um, typically, DSCR loans do have fees. I would say an average, um, and this is very much an average. Everybody's going to be different depending on credit, depending on the property, depending on what lender. Because again, we have 30 or 40 different lenders that we use. So there might be one lender that is more suited to your property than another lender. Um, okay. So on average, I would say you're about two points in origination. So that's 2% of the loan amount plus of around mm, $1,500 to $2,000 in lender fees, uh, plus standard closing costs. So so on a, let's say a $100,000 loan amount, um, you're going to be $2,000 in origination, about four grand in, in costs, right? Um, comparatively, I would say a conventional loan is probably around, assuming you're not paying any discount points or anything like that, probably around $1,500, um, in similar types of costs. So you do pay more. But if your exit strategy is a long-term hold, that kind of. Yeah. It's it like, okay, well, what's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, what's three or four grand over the course of 20 years of owning a property? It's nothing. Right. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Any other questions? Anyone else have any questions for Adam? Adam, give us some uh, some ideas of of what getting involved actually looks like of getting the paperwork together. What what is sure. required for a, a DSCR? Yeah, that's an excellent question. So an, another name for DSCR loans are low documentation loans, and the reason is is because there's not a lot to it. It's your entity documents. So um, so I will say that they. Um, Yes, we would. So there was a question from Elise. Will we be posting my contact info? Yes, we will. And I'll do that in moments. Um, but uh, uh, um, the low documentation side of, of DSCR is pretty sweet. So, okay. So you're looking at LLC docs. So in the state of Ohio, if it's just you, let's say it's just you and you're not working with a partner, um, you can go and just register an LLC for like a hundred bucks or something on the Secretary of State's website. And you'll need um, three documents in order to get uh, uh, the, the entity documents covered. And that is an operating agreement, an, e an IRS EIN letter, and the articles of organization. And let me go through each of those real quick. So the operating agreement, technically in the state of Ohio, a sole member LLC does not require an operating agreement to, to exist. Um, uh, but every lender does. Elise has a question. Let's go ahead, Elise. Yes. Can you um, buy with an LLC that was organized in a different state? Yes, absolutely. Depending on the state, uh, they may require a, um, it's called a certification of foreign entity. Um, and it, it varies from state to state. But uh, yes, to answer your question, yes. Okay. Um, so operating agreement. So an operating agreement, it just says who's in the LLC and what can they do? Can they take out loans? Can they sign for things? And what's the percentage of ownership? Um, if you have a lawyer that's setting up an LLC for you, they're going to provide this document to you as part of that process. Otherwise, operating agreements are very Googleable. Um, you don't, I mean, you. Uh, I recommend going to an attorney for anything, especially like if you have a partner that isn't a spouse. Uh, or if you don't really trust your spouse, then definitely lawyer it up. Um, but operating agreement, second document, IRS EIN letter. The, the IRS EIN letter for an LLC is kind of like your social security card for your LLC. It's the most, one of the most important documents that you'll ever have. And oftentimes I find people will get it and then they use it once and then they lose it. And it's kind of a nightmare to get another one. Um, when you are getting your IRS EIN letter, <clears throat> you can do it online through the IRS's website. And there's like exactly one screen which will allow you to download a PDF of that IRS EIN letter. 
So you want to be very cognizant of when that screen pops up and it says, hey, do you want to download a PDF copy? Uh, because if you click past it, you can't go back and you have to wait two to three weeks to get your letter in the mail. So that's a pivotal point that I would have you highlight in your notes. Um, and then the third document is the easiest document to get, and that's the Articles of Organization. So after your LLC is registered with the Secretary of State's website for your given state, you go and you go to the business search on the Secretary of State's website, and the document that comes up in the state of Ohio, it's called Articles of Organization. In other states, it's called different things sometimes, but it's basically the proof that your LLC is registered and exists and it's allowed to do business. So you need those three documents. Other documentation that you need is if if there's a lease in place, then you need a lease. If it's a refinance, you almost always need to have a lease, although we do have options to where you don't need a lease, but they're typically more expensive. So I highly recommend having a lease. If you're talking about the, you know, the Burr method from bigger pockets, you know, a pivotal early step in that is to rent it out. So make sure that you rent it out before you refinance because you'll typically get better terms than if mm -hmm. you don't have a lease in place. Um and then aside from that, maybe a bank statement or two to show that you've got some liquidity. They want to make sure that you have some solvency, um, but it's not much. It's usually um, six to 12 months of, of mortgage payments in the bank. And that can also be through investment accounts, things like brokerage or 401k, IRA, that kind of stuff can usually be used for reserves. And then um, other than that, things like driver's license and contacts for your insurance agent and what title company you want to use. We can use any title company that you prefer. So if you're a realtor or if you are an investor and you just have a great relationship with the title company, we'll be happy to uh, put them to work and do all the title work for us. Okay. What Elise other made questions? A, yeah. Well, Elise, Elise made a comment. She said, and those addresses better match. <laughs> When you were talking about fill, filling out all the forms. Oh, yeah. 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 Make sure your addresses match. Yeah. Don't. I mean, here's the other thing. Like people are like, oh, I don't want to pay a lawyer 400 bucks to form an LLC because I can do it in 10 minutes. Yeah, you can. But if you mess it up, it's going to be a pain. It's going to be a bummer. Plus, if you have a lawyer that's setting up your LLC, chances are they can do the, the lease for you. Right. And um, the nice thing about that is things change, you know, like I know, I know salty old landlords who use the same lease that they used in like 1978. And <laughs> it's not going to be, I mean, if you actually have to go and evict somebody, it's not going to be pretty. It, I mean, it hopefully will be, but like it, you want to have, you want to have that team, like something that we talk about all the time in our podcasts and in, in like LFG's content is having a good team. And I mean, right here, you got a bunch of them, right? Yes. You got David, you got, you got Kathy, you got Kyle. I mean, having the people in your corner and having a good lawyer, having a good accountant, I think is a big part of that. Yeah. And one of the things that I want to bring up too, while I have everybody on the call is that um, one of the things I'm doing is the Kathy Benner International Academy. And when you go to the real estate section, we have samples of all this stuff. So if you want to look at a sample and see what that looks like uh, and see how to put together an LLC or what an articles looks like or all of that, uh, we have samples. So um, I'll just mention that as well. We have all those sample forms. Any other questions for Adam? Adam, what uh, is the DSCR mostly what you're doing these days? What other what other type of loan is kind of up there? Um, so the other type of I would say DSCR is probably about half of it. The other half is hard money. So hard okay. money. Talk to yeah. us about hard money. Sure. Yeah. Hey, Ralph. Ralph has a question. What's going yes. on, Ralph? You're muted, Ralph. Hey, guys. There you go. Sorry about hey. that. I was running a little late. I just wanted to listen in. I'm Ralph Morris. I'm with Capital Federal Credit Union. I picked cool. up the meeting information yesterday on Meetup. So how you doing, everybody? I was just trying to listen in trying to work on another client who's uh, texting me information as we speak. So I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Multitasking. <laughs> I like it. Trying to multitask. Yeah. So we're, yeah, we are an FDIC credit union, licensed and operating in 50 states. Myself, I've been doing residential and commercial for about 25 years now. I just recently came on with the credit union uh, because they are a direct lender, and I've been looking for that for some time. And uh, cool. I... Uh, just wanted to say hello. That's all. Yeah. Nice. Where are you located, Ralph? I'm actually based in Florida. I'm in Orlando. 
Oh, ah. in Orlando. Okay. Oh. I'm, I'm, I Thursday, love, I'm don't. headed to Sarasota. Ralph, oh, okay. I would well, love don't to. Let it deceive you. Wait till next week, Kathy. Wait till next week because it's tad chilly down here right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph, I'd love to talk to you after the call about how we could possibly work together. I, I, I don't know if you caught this, but I'm a mortgage broker. So we have lots of relationships with different lenders in different states. And um, we, maybe we could have a deeper conversation about that. I'd be more than happy to. Absolutely, right. sir. I look forward to it. Awesome. Thanks for saying hi. Yeah. Now, Adam Absolutely. just put his he put his contact information there in the chat. So, Ralph, be sure and pick that up. It, it has his uh, uh, his email and also his phone number. So be sure you grab that, Ralph, so that you can connect put with Adam. Put my information in as we speak. Okay. Oh, great. And, also, um, I also threw my calendar out there as well. Um, oh, I see so it. My Calendly link. So if anybody wants to schedule a call, then that also works. Um, but you asked me about hard money and how that works. I'd be happy to talk about that a little bit. So hard money is other known is wise known as a fix and flip loan or a rehab loan. Um, this is going to be short term lending that you're going to use for property that needs a little tender love and care. Uh, so if you're buying something that is not rent ready immediately or something that you want to add value to with the intention of refinancing out later or selling at a higher price, um, you know, in a couple of months, then hard money is the lending solution that you're typically looking for. With hard money, um, we have kind of two flavors of hard money. There's institutional hard money, and then there's private money. Private money, and David could probably jump into this as well because I'm, he's getting into this world. Private money is where you you have a have a guy, have a David or an Aunt Mildred or somebody that um, believes in you and wants to invest in you and um, will will lend you money. And oftentimes they'll give you all the money up front, but maybe not. I don't know. Actually, do you want to talk, to talk a little bit about private money? I've been talking for like 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, we, we are. We're going to we're going to jump over oh, yeah. to David uh, in just a second. But when okay. you're but doing, I'll... When, yeah, when you're doing the hard money, Adam, what what type of where is your backing? Where is your hard money coming from? Sure. It's mostly from hedge funds. So I'll do my piece. And then if you want to talk about private money, you can get into that. So hard money, um, I'll use hard money to talk about institutional money rather than private money. So these are this is money that's coming from institutions, typically not banks, um, but hedge funds and um, uh, capital sources, venture capital sometimes. And uh, their guidelines are typically they'll get lend you anywhere from 80 to 90 percent loan to cost and cost is purchase price plus rehab budget right so um uh they'll do up to 80 90 percent of that or 70 percent of arv whichever's less uh so i'll, I'll I, I can demonstrate an example real quick so suppose that you bought or excuse me buying a house for a hundred thousand dollars and you're putting fifty thousand dollars of rehab into it and it's going to ARV for two hundred thousand dollars, so one hundred fifty, two hundred, right? Um, your total cost is one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's the purchase price plus the rehab budget. Ninety percent of that is one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars. So we check that against the seventy percent of ARV. What's seventy percent of ARV of two hundred thousand dollars? That's one hundred and forty thousand dollars, right? So one hundred and thirty-five is less than one hundred and forty. So we know that our loan amount is going to be one hundred and thirty-five thousand dollars in that case. So, okay, you've got this $135,000. Well, how much do I actually need to bring to closing? Do I not need to bring anything to closing? No, you actually need to bring money to closing. They want you to have a little skin in the game. So you take the $135,000 and you subtract the $50,000 from it. And that leaves you with $85,000. So in this scenario, you could buy that $100,000 house with an $85,000 purchase loan. You bring $15,000 plus closing costs and origination to closing. Um, and then you'd have a $50,000 escrow holdback. What's an escrow holdback? That's where we keep the rehab funds until you uh, finish the work. So not finish, but you can finish it in phases. Mm -hmm. So let's say you do a $5,000 kitchen. Um, you would submit a draw request. They're usually 150 to 200 bucks. And either an inspector comes out or you take pictures with your cell phone and you send them to the lender. They say, yep, that looks like a $5,000 kitchen. And then they wire you five thousand dollars in two to three business days usually so questions. that is the yeah questions about that 
I can, I'll t talk a little bit more about the terms. So typically your 12 month terms, six to 12 month terms, your interest only payments rates are usually somewhere between 10 and 12%. Um, one of the major drivers in hard money pricing is your experience. So once you get beyond five flips in the last two years or five rehabs in the last two years, then um, you are, you're going to get preferred pricing typically. Um, we do have a few lenders where if you've done like 30 flips or something like that, something crazy, then um, they have extra special pricing, but it's not that, I mean, it's figure 10 to 12% in a couple of points, like usually around, I would say three-ish points on average for hard money. Um, yeah, interest only payments. So you figure if you've got a 12%, here's an easy math problem. If you've got uh, a 12% interest rate, you've got a hundred thousand dollar loan, you're going to pay a thousand bucks a month for a payment. Um, and you know, if it's a, it's a uh, $150,000 loan, it's $1,500 a month because 12% divided by 12 is 1%. So 1% of the loan amount, that's probably going to be roughly what your payment is, um, for a hard money loan. Now, how long, how long can you, can you have the hard money before you have to pay sure. it back? Talk about yeah, that so because, because this is not long-term money. It's not long-term money. It's meant to get in and out. So um, these loans do not have any prepayment penalties. They're typically anywhere from six to 12 months. Um, it's so, intended for you to get the property and get it flipped and get it refinanced. Am I right? Correct. Correct. Yeah. So when we're working with somebody on a hard money loan, we are also having a conversation about that exit strategy. What are you doing? If you're flipping it and you're just going to put it on the market, then great. We want to help you and let's do that. If you want to keep it, that's also great. Then we can, wh what we can do is based on what your numbers are that you give us or what the ARV is and all that kind of stuff, we can say, okay, well, if you're going to keep it as a rental, this is what the loan scenario looks like when you're, when you're done, when you refinance into the, into the DSCR loan. Um, and that, uh, that people love that because then it's like, okay, cool. Now I got a plan. Now I know what I'm doing, what the next 12 months of my life is going to look like with this house. Um, so that's pretty awesome. All right. Questions. Anyone have some questions for Adam? I on do have one little, one little archaic piece of, this is like super weird. So like, and if you start throwing this term around, then people will be like, oh, they really know what they're talking about. So here you go. So and hard money loans, there are two types of interest. There's Dutch interest and non-Dutch interest, right? Dutch interest means that you are paying interest on the loan from day one, specifically the escrow holdback, right? So let's say you've bought that house for $100,000. You're going to put $50,000 into it. There's a question because you don't have the $50,000 of rehab yet, right? So when do you start paying interest on that $50,000? And the question is answered by whether or not it's considered Dutch interest or non-Dutch interest. With Dutch interest, you're paying interest on it from day one. With non-Dutch interest, you're only paying interest on the money that you draw. So from day one, you're going to pay interest. I mean, in either scenario, you're going to pay interest on the, the, the loan amount that's used to buy the house because it's drawn. It's drawn on, on day one of, of closing, right? And then the the escrow holdback is only going. You're only going to pay interest on that as you um, as you progress with the loan. So it's uh, for a, a smaller loan amount, it's less impactful. But if you're doing a big rehab, if you're buying something for five hundred thousand, mm -hmm. you put two hundred thousand into it, and it's going to ARV for a million dollars. I mean, then that's stuff that you really want to pay attention to. So we have lenders that have both options. It just kind of depends on the scenario. Um, but uh, yeah, and we can present both options for you. I love it. Questions before we jump over to David. All right. If anybody has a question, just raise your hand. We can always circle back. Um, David, tell us a little bit again about where you are, how you got to where you are, and what made you decide that you wanted to get into lending, and how did that all come about? Well, um, so... We, my wife and I decided to get into lending when we had done a cash out refi uh, on one of our existing investment properties with the intent of purchasing another deal. Uh, we had one in mind. We'd even put an offer on it. We needed to raise the capital. Don't remember the exact order of operations, but 
we had the money in the bank and then the deal fell through. Um, it became a, uh, the victim of very bad appraisal. <laughs> so we, we've all battled, we've all battled appraisals over the past. So I get it. Yeah. So at that point, we, we didn't have a backup deal. Uh, we were now paying interest on, I, I don't remember the exact amount of money, but we were paying interest on this pile of money we had sitting in the bank. Uh, went to a meetup, not this particular one, but one that I know Kathy is also uh, attends on a regular <laughs> basis. So, you know, it's a small world, the investment community or in real estate community. Uh, and said, hey, we have some money. <laughs> Does anybody need any? And as soon as you say that, uh, they descend on you like vultures on a carcass. So, <laughs> <laughs> and that is, that's exactly how we got started uh, as private lenders. And we thought, hey, this pays similar to owning a rental property and <laughs> is a lot less work on the day-to-day. -day. Nobody calls me and says the money that I've lent them for this you know, purchase that they made uh, has a, a plug toilet. So now tell us what those, tell us how the numbers look compared to if you, if you bought a property with the funds or you loaned out the funds, what kind of return? Give us an example there if you could. So we're lending right now at the 12%. Uh, Adam mentioned hard money is 10 to 12%. That's where we are, um, two turns have been thrown out, private money and hard money. And I think Adam mentioned this as well. As well. They're, they're both technically private money. Um, the, the terms do not have a, a legal differentiation. They get used within the real estate community to kind of imply different things. The private money implies, it's gonna imply either the relationship you have with the lender, uh, all of us, well, most of us, our first uh, private loan was from the bank of mom and dad. Um, I think uh, Adam Thoreau, Aunt, Aunt May or somebody like that. You know, these, these are, uh, it's coming from family, coming from friends. Uh, it also gets used to kind of imply that it's coming from a smaller lender. And that's where we are. Uh, we don't have the big hedge fund bank backing like uh, the hard money lenders that Adam is talking about. So we consider ourselves at this point more a private lender, uh, but from a legal standpoint, it's all the same. It's money that's not coming from a banking institution. Um, sorry, I babbled and now I have forgotten your question. The difference between you've, you've got this money and your deal fell through. Oh, so that's now, right. you know, why would I decide to become a private money lender versus just finding another real estate deal? What, what made it look attractive to you? So like I said, we, we uh, 10 to 12%, we'll go with a 12. That's what we're lending out right now because um, interest rates are higher. Mm -hmm. So uh, as Adam said, the uh, math becomes really easy on that. So our company, Velocity Capital Solutions, I'll, I'll put some information on that and I'll tell you a little bit more about how the company formed because that's not uh, how Tammy and I got necessarily got started. We've, we've moved on a little bit from there. Um, but we have out a loan that's 120000 so we collect $1,200 uh, a month on this loan. Um, I have a couple of partners, so proportionally that gets distributed based on how much uh, each partner has contributed to that loan and it's just it's pure mailbox money now it's a little hard to really go into what is how does that compare to uh your rental property because this is purely from a cash flow standpoint and it's also a very short term so i'm going to get a, a year-long lease and i'm pretty much guaranteed this person's not going to re-up so now i'm going to have to turn around and find you know somebody to to uh to lend that money to again, once that loan pays off, um, but it is mailbox money. Now, it doesn't come with any appreciation. It doesn't come with any tax benefits. Uh, matter of fact, it just gets taxed as regular income at, at in whatever your interest or your tax rate is. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of other benefits. There's no depreciation. A lot of other benefits that go along with real estate beyond the cash flow. And as a private lender that you get none of those other things. 
but the cash flow truly is about as close to passive mailbox money as you can get. And like you said, you're not getting a phone call at 3 a.m. that the toilet's running over or that the roof is leaking or that the hot water tank quit working. Correct. So for yeah. those of you that have some cash in your back pocket, whether it be in an IRA or 401k or even in a CD or a savings account, this is another option on how you can invest in real estate. There's 101 ways to invest in real estate. And this is another option on how you can invest in real estate if you don't want to worry about the phone calls from the tenants. And I'll go into even one more way, if you don't mind, Kathy. No, so, go ahead. Um, you know, if you're truly lending to family, you're not doing you're most likely not doing any kind of real underwriting. Um, but we uh, are lending right now to people that we have a, an existing relationship with, even if it's just through meetups. Uh, but that's not tight enough for us to skip the whole underwriting process. So we actually do do our underwriting. I want to know about your deal. I want to know that you have some level of liquidity, as Adam mentioned, for uh, the... The, the requirements of what we're going to look at actually aren't that different from your hard money lenders. A um, little less stringent. Our processes aren't as tight yet because we haven't been doing it as long. We don't do nearly as many loans. Um, and, you know, I know you personally. So if some things, some of the I's aren't dotted, we can probably deal with that. Um, but it's, it's very similar. So if that's not, if that process isn't something you're comfortable with, uh, we also, like I mentioned, don't have the big hedge fund backing us. So we need some other way to raise some capital. And the way we are going to do that, this isn't what, right, we're still putting the, the uh, structure in place for this, but if anybody's interested, I'd be happy to take your contact information and get back to you once the lawyers have finished drawing everything up. Um, selling essentially selling interest in the loans so we'll do the underwriting we'll originate it get it all funded and then if you have some money that you'd like to put into uh, some private lending but you don't want to go through the underwriting process you can get a hold of me and i'll say yeah we have this uh hundred and twenty thousand dollar loan how much of it would you like to buy give me sixty thousand and half that We'll keep a couple instead of the 12%, I, I pay you 10. We're going to keep a couple of percent just for uh, operating costs, something to cover the administration of that loan, servicing that loan. But then I'll send you a check monthly for uh, your, your, your 10%. And we'll take your 60 and turn around and, and originate the next loan. Now, Elise put in the chat, uh, she said, is there a minimum investment for that? And my guess is that maybe you haven't tidied all that up yet. So the answer is yes. The The minimum investment that we'll, we'll take is 10% of the loan. Because um, it, it just, as I have to divide up each, you know, mm -hmm. the proceeds from each of these loans, I don't want to have to do more than 10 slices of a pie for any one given loan. Um, but if you're a first time, if this is your first time, we're just looking to dip your toe and see what it looks like. We'll definitely work with you. I love it. Now, tell us a little bit about your actual company. So the company is Velocity Capital Solutions. Um, I did have put a PowerPoint together, but honestly, we've already covered most of the slides, so I don't want to make you sit through the whole thing, but, uh, you can share your screen. Of course, I started at the end of my slide or my presentation. Nope, that's okay. There we go. So there we are, oh, Velocity Capital Solutions. Uh, my name is David Tevin. You know, I think most of you can probably see that on the screen there, um, but I am the managing member. Take a screen uh, print for you folks that, that one is in, there it is. So take a screen print of that and you'll have all of his contact info. That's right. And go on to the next one, because this is somewhat interesting. I, I mentioned partners. Um, so I'm David, we, uh, my wife and I have been in 
real estate investors, and all three of us, all three of the partners are real estate investors, been doing it since 2020. Michelle Cook, uh, I guess she's our old timer here. She's uh, rented her first property. They actually rented out uh, the house they've been living in when they purchased a new one. So started renting it in 2012. Uh, and then Chris Utter, another investor, he started in 2019. All of us met through Happy House Hunters. Yay! I I love that. I love that. That I that that's that's my little contribution to the. <laughs> it does it does my heart proud to see all you guys together. Well, it is a major contribution, and you know you're right. Uh, we I met my partners, business partners here through Happy House Hunters. I met Kyle, who has bought and sold properties for us through Happy House Hunters. I met Adam, who has financed properties for us through Happy House Hunters. So. Um, they, you know, there's the little, little meme that they like to say your net worth is your net network or something along those lines. And, you know, it can sound a little corny, but it's, a, there's a lot of truth to it. But at any rate, that is how we all came together. And all of us are long-term buy and hold investors. Uh, we founded VCS with a couple of goals in mind. Uh, one was helping fellow investors. So there's when you're getting started, uh, you perhaps you have the capital for the first purchase. Where do you get the funding for the second can be a big question for a lot of uh, investors who are, who are just starting out. Um, and they don't yet have the experience to uh, getting good with all of Adam's big hedge fund and, uh, lenders. And you know, so, we thought we, there's an opportunity for us to help those people who we have that personal relationship with, who we see are starting or trying to get some uh, traction so we can help them. And then there's also just keeping our own capital at work because I don't want a bunch of money that I'm paying interest on sitting in the bank doing nothing for me. So we offer, I struggled whether to call it private money or hard money. But as I mentioned earlier, it's pretty much all the same thing. It's just uh, it's just terminology to describe money that's not coming from a major bank. Um, and then, so we offer that for renovation and investment in real estate. Uh, so we'll, we can fund your renovation budget or we can fund the uh, purchase, your per or, uh, acquisition costs and then we hope to soon be offering an opportunity for people to invest in our company, help us keep the capital, keep a, uh, adequate capital on hand so that uh, I, I will say right now, I do get a lot of calls from investors that we know saying, hey, do you have any money available? And, and far too often I'm having to say no. So we'd like to turn that around. Um, it's gonna talk private money and hard money, but I think we've beaten that horse to death as well as the differences. So why would an investor want to borrow private money? Why would they want to come to us? And I know we've uh, touched on already most of this, uh, but it really works for uh, flippers uh, or if you're looking to purchase from a wholesaler and you want to come to the table with cash, hard money is often seen as being equivalent to a cash offer deal. It's because we're able to, you're, you're often able to close in as little as a week, sometimes even faster. I'll tell you, I will not be able to close you in anything under a week, but uh, there are some large hard money lenders out there. And if you have that existing relationship, uh, they can turn it around sometimes in you know 24 to 48 hours. And, so, and David, it is about relationships because as you work with folks and you get to know their finances and their background and their experience level, you can move a little faster when they come to you right. the second and third time because you've built that relationship. And when you have a, an investor who's doing multiple deals a year, you don't need to collect necessarily all of that paperwork every single time. It hasn't changed that much in the last two months. So you mm -hmm. already have everything you need to do you, are, you need to underwrite that next deal. You just want to make sure that uh, the numbers that they're presenting make sense and, and you're off to the races. So 
And there's also, and, and you know, Adam touched on this a little bit also, the impact on your credit score. Uh, we don't do a hard pull most often if, because uh, right now we're dealing with uh, people we already have and know and trust. I'll uh, ask for is, you know, give me access to go look at your free credit report.com printout and we're good for there. So, you know, a hard credit pull from us is not going to show up. That's not universal across the board. Some lenders definitely will do the hard pull, but a lot of them aren't going to report that loan to a, the credit bureau. So even though you might uh, you might have a hard pull showing up on your credit, you're not going to have this loan hanging out there. So we talked about what hard money is good for. I want to do, I do want to stress one thing that it's not good for, and that is it's not good for owner occupied properties. Um, as soon, and this is for any period of time at all, we will make you sign an affidavit that says you will never spend the night in that property ever, ever, ever. Uh, cause as soon as you do, and it can be considered a, any kind of, uh, res uh, primary residence or secondary residence for you as the borrower, we're suddenly, uh, subject to all of the Dodd-Frank rules and all the reporting and um, the, the uh, oh, the non-discrimination. Uh, I'm blanking on the term for all of these different things that we'd have to present. <laughs> so, but at any rate, that is why uh, hard money is typically not good at all if you're planning on occupying that in any way whatsoever. So, if uh, that is your plan, please disclose that. Um, but yeah, we're gonna make you sign the affidavit and so will most others. Anybody who doesn't, doesn't realize the gamble that they're taking. And for turnkey buy and hold properties, uh, we already talked about it being more expensive. If, you're, uh, if it doesn't need uh, a lot of renovation, if it could already get a, a be approved for a loan, a, a conventional loan from a bank, you're most likely better off going for that or the DSCR loans. Uh, this is something you're gonna want when maybe the banks aren't willing to look at it yet because it needs so much renovation or speed is of the essence and you're gonna turn around and sell it in six months anyway. So the more, the expense that you rack up over those six months for this more expensive money, uh, is worth the speed of getting the loan and getting that property under, you know, getting it, the renovation started and getting it back on the market. I already talked about the loans, what a typical one looks like, so I won't bore you with that again. And the hard money, what do it look for? Uh, please feel free to ask questions if you have it, but I don't think there's anything new on that. Oh, and then I ran out of my presentation. So, that's who we are. It's what we do. We're brand new. Uh, we just formed this company uh, at the end of last year. So we only have the one loan out. Uh, Tammy and I have done uh, about half a dozen loans on our own, um, uh, actually from both directions. We borrowed private money and lent private money. Um, and then the other, my other two partners, don't have quite as much experience with it, but yeah, we've all done our a little bit and decided to come together and try to make this into a, a real business and a way to bring a little mailbox, true mailbox money or something closer to mailbox money to real estate investing. I am going to, um, thank you for that, David. I'm, I'm just looking at the chat and, um, Oh. I see where, where Kyle put some contact information there and I'm going to put it out to everyone because it just went to the panel. So I'll make sure that everybody gets Kyle's information. Um, Ralph has a question. Uh, Ralph, go ahead. Can you unmute there, Ralph? Sorry about that. Can you hear me now? Yes. Awesome. Thank you, David. I appreciate that information. And uh, I've done some hard money and worked with some hard monies as a as an LO and as a senior LO in the past myself. When I used to do, okay, here it comes. I'm dating myself, Kathy. You ready? <laughs> Subprime. 
That's right. Let's just leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, I got a I question get it. for you, David. What yeah. time, what terms are you offering? How long are you holding? How long are you holding financing before they've got to exit? And what kind of exit strategies are you suggesting to the client? So our you get the question a lot. Um, our our typical loan is going to be right now it'll be twelve uh, percent, uh, one to two points, depending on on your experience and and perhaps the size of the deal. Uh, we start with a 12 month and I've actually had uh, uh, borrowers come and say, I only need it for five months or I only need it for three months. Um, I always write the first, I always write it up as a 12 month because you never know. And, and actually you ought to expect that renovation not to go as planned. So write it up as 12 month and it does have an auto extension clause for an additional 12 um, at comes with a $250 fee to do the extension, but then it'll run a second year if, you have, if it needs to. So those are our typical terms, um, but everything is negotiable and every deal is different. So that will but those be- terms are very workable. I mean, that's that's those are great terms when you're looking at private or hard money to get into a property and get it flipped. Are you- are you doing 100% financing, David? No, we're uh, doing 75, 75% LTV. I was going to ask that question myself, Adam. So I know you're, you're offering, that's actually pretty good. Most of the hard money that I know, it's not unusual to have them charging, you know, four, five, six points on the deal. So that's not unusual at all. So. <laughs> The exit strategy, the reason why I asked that, Dave, is because in the past, when I've run different offices, I've worked with my some of my hard money and my private lenders in order to be a, a good exit strategy for their clients to get them paid off. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of times, and, and I can offer that now here at the credit union, because in addition to the loans we do in all 50 states for residential, I also have an outlet for commercial, by the way, just on the side. But in, in addition to the 50 state loans we do, we also work with, and through our legal team, we work with clients that need help with their credit to reestablish or restart their credit. And they're working with a legal team of attorneys to get that done. So a lot of times that's the reason why they're going hard money or private money, mm -hmm. because they can't quite qualify through what the banks are going to ask for. And it's a lot easier and a lot more, it's a lot easier to expedite that and get that property so they don't lose it by going hard money and during that term, get them in position to be able to roll that out, refinance it, pay you off, and get them in something a little more substantial along what they're looking for if it's a one to four unit or if it's a commercial deal or whatever. So sure. I always like setting that relationship up. That's why I asked the question. Ralph, that's a great question. That's a great point. And uh, David, how, how, um, how, what is your your range of area uh, geographic that you will loan? I, is it just in Ohio? Is it more than Ohio? What what are your what is your your uh, plan no, there? Right right now, it's certainly just in Ohio. Um, okay. And right now, because I don't yet have the, so much capital that I need to go outside of Central Ohio, I'm going to stay within the geographic area that, that uh, me and my partners kind of know and understand. Okay. Uh, it's not because it's our goal to never grow beyond that. Uh, it's just that right now we certainly don't have to. The, the number of uh, local investors we know looking for money means that we can stay in the zones that we're comfortable with. And then as we get better at loaning and as we raise more capital, start expanding outward. But and you know the market, sure. you know the market here too, as That's well. That's right. Yeah. So get to uh, cut my teeth, as, as they say, on in the market that I know. And then as I get comfortable with that, we'll, we'll grow. Uh, it definitely will be quite a while before we start crossing state lines. But yeah, I hope to call all of Ohio sense. my region in the near future. Uh, Ralph asked about well, that makes sense. exit strategies. Um, mm -hmm. And that is, I do like to ask what your plan B is. So what I expect on an exit strategy is somebody's, you know, they're gonna sell the property or they're gonna refinance the property. 
And then one of those two is going to be their their primary uh, exit strategy. But I always like to ask, you know, if it, if this doesn't work, if you can't refinance it, uh, will you be able to sell this um, and pay us off? What you know, what is going to be that plan B? Uh, I don't want to see somebody who, well, I I, I pause because. The, the idea that the person is working uh, with the attorneys at that moment, trying to get their credit to where they would be able to refinance. I can certainly see that. And this is a person that I could see personally, I'd want to be able to help, or I want to help, not even be able, I want to help. Um, from our business standpoint, I'm not sure how we would approach that just now. That, that's a situation we haven't been presented with yet. Um, I would be looking for that person if their primary goal was as a flipper, I would certainly be less concerned with it. Um, but if they're looking to refinance that and make a long-term buy and hold out of it, but they don't have the credit to actually be able to do it, I don't know what I'd do with that, Ralph. Yes. Ralph has his hand up again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. Yeah, well, we can definitely have that conversation, David, and talk about that and see how to structure it. That is, part of that is my next question was, what type of properties are you lending on? Residential only, or are you lending on commercial, or is there a specific type you're, you're working with? No, right now we're doing uh, single family and small, medium, well, not, yeah, small to medium size, probably, well, Four units and less, so small multifamily, okay. one, uh, not medium. Residential, one to four units. There you go. I'm overcomplicating. Okay, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> no worry. Any I other can do questions those all for day David? long? Mm -hmm. Yes, Ralph. Thank you so much. Any other questions for for David? We are past the top of the hour. This has been a great conversation. I hope all of you found tons of value in our conversation today. Adam, thank you so much for, for your contribution and David for yours. And of course, Kyle, as always, um, is there to support any properties that you guys want to look at. So um, we put everything in the chat. However, this is being recorded and it will be in the Kathy Benner International Academy and I will have everyone's contact information there as well. Uh, tomorrow morning, Adam, tell us again what's going on in Westerville so that we can connect with you. Sure, we have mortgage in the morning uh, on at uh, the family room in Westerville. And what it is, it starts at 930. Um, we're going to have uh, a number of scenarios presented for, I think it's short-term rentals is what we're doing tomorrow. So we're going to talk about short-term rental financing. And so like, if you want to do an Airbnb, come to that. It'll be great. I think we're buying everybody coffee. So uh, yeah, come out. But there'll be like live demonstrations and a panel and It'll be good. It'll be a good, I love it. good thing. I love yeah. it. And then uh, tomorrow night, we are going to all be at the COIN event, which is at Planks on Parsons in Columbus, Ohio. David, are you going to be there at Planks? I know it's on the calendar, so probably. Okay. So for those of you that are local, if you want to come out in person and, uh, and see Adam or myself or David or Kyle, uh, you can come to uh, the mor mor Mortgage Mornings or the COIN event, which yeah. is also with the Happy House Centers tomorrow night at 5 o'clock is when and networking the, starts. The COIN event, there's it's a presentation about permits, building permits. So mm -hmm. yes. what are permits and how do you get them? Yes, yes. So if you're if you're in it, purchasing property and you're going to rehab, it, whether you're going to flip or you're going to buy and hold, um, Anything that you're going to fix, you're going to need some permits. So that's going to be great conversation tomorrow night. So come out to the point. Uh, networking starts at five. And I believe it's being sponsored by Jesse tomorrow night. I think she's oh. picking up the tab from five to seven. So for pizza, drinks for pizza. her own. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so so come out and have some pizza tomorrow night if you're if you're local. Um, anyway, I just want to say thanks to everybody and uh, go to kathybinner.com. 
and you can scroll down to the academy. And if you just look for the real estate investor section, you will find all of our replays and I'll have everyone's contact information there as well. So if you didn't get it out of the chat today or you didn't take a screen print or write it down or save it, you can just go to kathybinner.com and you can find all the replays. And I will put that back in the chat again one more time. Uh, you see my name here in my little Hollywood square, how to spell it, um, but I did put it in the chat. So everybody's contact information will be there as well. So thank you, everyone. And hopefully we will either see you tomorrow morning with Adam or tomorrow evening with David and Kyle and myself and Adam. Adam will be there as well tomorrow night. And so we'll see everyone next time. Put us on your calendar. Thank you, Kathy. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.